Graham joins us now. That, can I just say, that Judy Dench interview you did, the most amazing thing happened to me that next morning, because you've recorded it here. Yeah. And they gave Judy Dench my dressing room from GMB, right? Because what did she leave? Yeah, yeah, so I know. <laughs> but, but I didn't know, I didn't know. I went in the next morning for work and there was a signed photo from Judy on my desk. She said, oh. I've been in doing Graham Norton's show. I love Tipping Point, Ben. Just want to say thank you very much. Lots of So I've always Aww. wanted to say thank you for having Judy on because one of the best things I've got in my memory box is a signed photo from Judy Dench. And she wouldn't have been there had she that not been on your so show. That is so nice. Oh, what a nice woman. That what is she lovely thing to do. Yeah. She's just that class. That is pure class. Yeah. Pure yeah, class. Yeah, yeah. Does, it, does it feel like... 25 years, it 1998. It really, it. really doesn't. And I think if someone had told me back then, oh, mm. in 25 years, you'll still be doing this job, and uh, I, one, I wouldn't have believed them, and two, I really would have thought I'd still be enjoying it or looking forward to it. You know, yeah. we taped the first one this Thursday, and I'm, you looking know, geeked and excited to do it. It's, yeah. And I guess because it's like this, it never stays the same, yeah. in that the guests are always different, the audience is different, so there's always something that'll keep you interested. Uh -huh. What has changed, though, because since... Cause I was watching some old So Graham Norton right. shows, the original <laughs> ones, and, and, and it's, you know, it's, it, that actually you took over from Euro Trash, didn't yeah. you? That was the thing. Yes. So it had to be a little bit more frisky and a little bit more daring. It was really out there. We were late night Channel 4, kind of post-pub entertainment. So it was very, we were fitting into that slot. And also, you know, I was much younger. I was in my 30s then, now I'm in my 60s. <laughs> so, I mean, God. So, you know, Running around the audience asking about their sex life is fine when yeah. you're 30. Yeah. It's a bit creepy if you're a 60-year-old <laughs> man going up to young girls and going, yeah. so, uh, so it had to change. And I think one of the things that's helped, in a way, is that, you know, I've grown up on telly. Yeah. You know, that I've kind of stuck around for that length. Mm. So people have just got used to me being there. I always think one of the hardest things, I mean, you look at your sofa and, I mean, you don't get starstruck at all, but you could do because it's, in, it's incredible the people that are sitting on there. Uh, do you have to think about the combination? Who works well with who? Like, because that must be the hardest bit, I think. Well, on a good week, you think about it. Right. <laughs> you know, because you've got time and you're like, oh, will we have them or will we have them? On another week, it's just like, good luck, everyone. <laughs> That's who's on the sofa. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> so it's a bit of both. But you try to kind of plan. And also, it's you know what it's like? If you've interviewed someone before, you kind of go, oh, they'll like to be next yes. to a comic. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. they'll like to be next to someone who's... You know, that sort of thing. You know, you know what kind of engages their brain. I think yeah. one of the things I love is when you're watching it and your guests get curious about the other guests. Yeah. I love and they all say, and you can yeah. almost sit back and let them just have a conversation. That's when it's at its best, when the sofa starts talking to itself and I can just sit there and da, da, da. Have and, a drink. <laughs> yeah, because it is interesting, isn't it, how, you know, some people are interested in other people mm. and some big stars just sit there waiting to see themselves on the monitor, <laughs> waiting, for me, waiting for me to say their name and then they kind of Come engage the show again. But Like who? I knew you were going to say that. You know he's not going to tell you. But like I knew you. you did. I knew <laughs> you nearly got me. Uh, no, no, no names. Um, what's lovely as well is that people come back, and that's like always yeah. such a lovely sign that people really trust you and they're really having a good time. I, think, I mean, Kylie, I think, has been on eight times. No, has she really? She has. David Mitchell, seven times. Because they're are they on... They're on this. They're, they're on this on week. This we've got, week. Uh, Kylie, David Mitchell. Uh, we've got Stephen Graham for that new I mean, show, that's... Boiling Point. Have you seen that? Yes. Yes. I worked in restaurants. I found it quite triggering. I bet it was. I found it really stressful yeah, 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 yeah. to watch yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and uh, Mawan Rizwan. Have you seen Juice? His no, I haven't I've seen that. Watching... So good. I've, I've started it. Yeah, it's really, really. It's good. got Russell Tovey in as well, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know absolutely. Oh. Do you think though, Graham, that comedy and the nature of comedy has changed so much? over the 25 that you've been doing this, have you found that you have to temper what you can do with some of those celebrities that come on? Like, in the past, you may have poked a bit more fun at them and now you have to be a bit more careful. I think because of where we are in the world and the, the calibre of stars we get, you know, back in Channel 4 days, we, you know, we would have people who hadn't been on telly for quite a long time. Mm. Mm. You know, uh, people like, with the mother from the Waltons on. Yeah. You know. Um, Great booking. Uh, well, I, you know, she was, oh, Cagney and Lacey came yes. on. You know, yeah. people I loved. And so you could have a laugh with them because, you know, they weren't worried about their demographic or da-da-da. Their brand. And, and now, you know, we're dealing with big, big stars who are kind of at the top of their game. So you have to be a bit more careful uh, with them, I think. Mm. Um, and as for comedy, I think audiences tell you What's funny? The good thing is we've got a live audience. So in you the know studio. pretty quickly. So you know there's stuff that we used to do that if you that got laughs, if you did it now, it wouldn't get laughs. Mm. Yeah. And I think it, it, you were kind of led by them. Yeah, everything changes over time, doesn't yeah. it? Um, 
Can we talk about Eurovision? Because oh, yes. you look like you're having the best time. It's the first time you move from the commentary box into the heart <laughs> of the arena. I mean, you got emotional at one time. I mean, I think we all shed a tear when you'll never walk alone and just yeah. the crowd. And it, it was looked... such a Eurovision moment when yeah. never walk alone. That whole stadium singing it back. Oh. And, and that's what, you know, Eurovision is a silly song contest. It's nonsense. But it does have moments like that where you think, actually, it does bring people together yeah. in a kind of real way. It's a real magic. talk about the rise and glory of Hannah Waddingham? I know. Oh, my goodness Obsessed me. Obsessed with yeah. her. Uh, she, future queen of England, this woman. It's incredible. Uh, she's, uh, there was nothing she can't do now. There was a, there was a few months there where it was... Uh, you, know, yes. you, you opened your curtains, Hannah Waddingham was there. <laughs> <laughs> In a different dress. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That's exactly the dress. The whole setup. You know, actually watching that joy and the friends that I yeah. was mean, friends with Ryland that went up and were part of it and got to experience it and friends that worked on it as well, the yes. directors and the Everyone floor managers. Everyone worked on it. Yeah. Everyone worked the, on anyone it. in telly in yeah. the UK was working on Eurovision. Yeah. Just saying what an extraordinary experience it was. Yeah, and, and also what was great was Liverpool. It mm. took, yes. Because Liverpool was the perfect size of city. It took over the whole city. The sun shone. It was, you know, I felt so sorry for Liverpool on the Sunday <laughs> as I was leaving and they were like ripping down Eurovision banners. Yeah. So you just thought, what a come down yeah. from yeah. Liverpool. From there. Yeah. So from Eurovision to Wheel of Fortune, you're bringing it back to ITV. <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, it'll be back in the new year. And uh, Have you recorded any yet? No, I haven't. And what I, I mean, what I like about it is, because I don't know, you must have done game show yes. pilots. And you're always halfway through a game show pilot and somebody writes, oh, this will never work <laughs> because of this thing we didn't think of. Wheel of Fortune, it works. You yes. know that, it yeah. Works. They've lined out the kinks. Yeah. 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 We, we should have got you works. on the wheel, which is up oh, there. Yes. You could have spinning <laughs> it. Look at it go. <laughs> um, it's so lovely to see you. Oh, gorgeous to see Thank you. you. Uh, the Graham Norton Show returns Friday, BBC One at 10.40. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you.